Justin Fields, Jalen Hurts, Tate Martell. Those are three of the biggest name transfers this offseason in college football, right? All at the quarterback position. Which of those three has the best chance to make the biggest impact this season, 2019? We're going to talk about that and discuss some other things related to transfers and these three quarterbacks in particular in today's very exciting can't-miss episode of Coffee Talk with Uncle Lou. Enjoy. <music> Good morning, 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 good morning. Hey Alexa. Good morning, Lou. Uh, yeah, good morning. Uh, what's the news today? 16 people unsubscribed from Lootube because the intros are way too long. That's it? 11 people left comments because Happy Meal jokes hurt their feelings. <laughs> okay, good. Thank you, Alexa. You're welcome, Lou. Enjoy your coffee and have a good morning. Yeah, yeah, yeah. also on too. Cheese though. Yeah, get some of that book learning too. Yeah, have a good morning though. Wash your hands, wash, wash, wash. Shake your hands, shake, shake, shake. Brush your teeth, brush, brush, brush. Good morning. Okay, let's start first with Justin Fields, right? Of course, Georgia quarterback transferring to Ohio State. Now, uh, Justin Fields was signed in the class of 2018 at Georgia, widely considered to be the number one or number two prospect in America for that year. Uh, Trevor Lawrence, of course, being the other uh, two different styles of quarterbacks, obviously. Trevor Lawrence, uh, more of a pocket passer. Justin Fields, of course, elite dual threat quarterback coming out of high school. Uh, enrolls at Georgia, plays a lot really in year one, at least for a freshman, right? But nothing real meaningful. Played in a lot of garbage time and honestly a lot of handoffs in the fourth quarter and a lot of quarterback sweeps. I mean, I've been over all that. That's not the point of this video. So he decides to leave Georgia and head to Ohio State. You got Jalen Hurts, right? Starter for a couple of years at Alabama. Till two years ago, uh, Tua comes into the national title game at halftime, sort of takes over the team from there. Uh, Hurt stuck around this past season, got a good bit of playing time in the second half. And unlike Georgia, when Jalen Hurts got in the game in the second half, Alabama actually let their backup quarterback play quarterback. So he stuck around this year, of course, came in, in the second half of the SEC title game. We know how that went. He's decided to transfer for his final season. And, of course, you have Tate Martell, who was enrolled at Ohio State, redshirted his freshman year was to back up this past season to Dwayne Haskins, and he has announced he's transferring to Miami. So which of those three has the best chance to start or have an impact immediately in 2019? Not Tate Martell, right? Of the three, Tate Martell is the most likely to have to sit out in 2019 because of NCAA transfer rules. Jalen Hurts does not have to sit out no matter what, right? He's a graduate transfer. Once you graduate, you can transfer and you do not have to sit out at all for any reason, period. You don't need a waiver to play. You don't need anything. Once you've graduated, you're free to transfer and play immediately. So Jalen Hurts to Maryland, he will play this year. And to be honest, of the three quarterbacks, Jalen Hurts will probably have the best season of those three or at least has a chance to have the best season of those three. Now, I think he's going to the worst team of the three, right? Jalen Hurts headed to Maryland. But like I said, he's a graduate transfer. He's already got a ton of experience compared to the other two guys. I mean, it's not even close to Jalen Hurts' experience, right? And he's following Alabama offensive coordinator from Alabama who now has the head coaching job at Maryland. So when Jalen Hurts gets there, he'll have a head start on every other quarterback there already knowing the playbook and everything from Alabama. So he's going to be the start. Listen, Jalen Hurts isn't transferring anywhere where he's not going to be the starter, right? So we know he's going. He's 100% going to play. And because of the experience and the familiarity with, uh, with the head coach and, and the playbook and all that, 
I think you would have to say that of those three, Jalen Hurts probably has the best opportunity to have the best season in 2019. Number two, I would go with Justin Fields. Ohio State has found itself in a uh, pickle, really, with its quarterback situation. When Justin Fields announced he was going to transfer and Ohio State popped up on his radar, Tate Martell uh, decided he didn't want to be there anymore and he's transferred out to Miami. That leaves Ohio State in not a very good situation at quarterback, right? They do have uh, they do have three scholarship quarterbacks if you count Justin Fields. One is a graduate transfer from uh, West Virginia. He has a little bit of experience uh, from back in 2017, but let's be real. He's not really a starting quarterback and was not brought to Ohio State to be a starting quarterback. He's brought in mainly for depth, emergency situations, and things like that. You also have Baldwin over at Ohio State right now. He's been there a year, but he was hurt, so he hasn't had any playing time. He was behind Haskins and actually Martell last year at Ohio State because of his injury. Hasn't had any playing time at all, and he's nowhere near really as highly of a recruited guy as Justin Fields or Tate Martell. He does have the one year in the system, even though like he was injured. So it seems like Justin Fields is going to be the guy in 2019 at Ohio State if he can get his waiver approved, right? He has to sit out a year technically because he's transferring as an underclassman from uh, one Power 5 school to another. Rules require you to sit out for one year unless you're able to get a waiver from the NCAA. Most people that you talk to, most uh, articles that you read, the so-called experts or whatever, seem to think that Justin Fields is going to get that waiver and be able to play right away. I tend to agree, and it has nothing to do with whether or not I think Justin Fields is right or wrong in his reasoning for seeking the waiver, which if if you don't know, is going to be uh, he, he, some racial issues that he's claiming at, at UGA. We all know the issue with the baseball player uh, in the stands at the game. But So, so Justin Fields is, uh, is, is using... Uh, using is not the right word. Again, I, I, I'm, I, it doesn't matter whether it's right or wrong what he's doing. The point is, I, I don't think the NCAA wants to be in a position where they're telling a kid no who is claiming he has to leave uh, for racial issues. So I, I'm just under the impression that they're going to grant his waiver. And if they do, I think Justin Fields will be the starting quarterback for Ohio State in 2019, and they're going to roll their dice with him. Now, he's very talented. He didn't impress at Georgia his freshman year, but to be fair to Justin Fields, and if you guys have been listening to me for any amount of time at all, you know how I feel about this situation. He was never given an opportunity or a fair chance at Georgia. Georgia's coaching staff had no idea what to do with a kid like Justin Fields. Uh, the dual threat thing, we have no idea how to use that. Cheney, Pittman, Kirby, uh, these are pro-style conservative guys. They just had no clue what to do with Justin Fields. They're running him in on second down for no reason to run quarterback sweeps putting them in in the fourth quarter and letting them hand on a hand off uh, to walk on running backs against all these teams who were beaten by 30 points. They they just didn't do a very good job, in my opinion, of developing Justin Fields. That's now going to fall on Ryan Day and Ohio State. Of course, Ryan Day has a ton of experience with quarterbacks with a similar skill set as Justin Fields. And to be honest, as, as much as I love Georgia and hate Ohio State, Justin Fields has the potential to be a really, really good quarterback at Ohio State with the coaching staff they have there. They've proven time after time after time that they're able to develop these dual threat quarterbacks. Now they've yet to really find one that's become a superstar in the NFL, but that's not the point. You don't have to have an NFL quarterback to be successful in college. That's been proven time and time and time and time and time again. And I have no doubt in my mind that if Justin Fields waiver goes through, he will become the starting quarterback at Ohio State this year, and I think he'll put up big numbers there. I think he'll he'll play well there, and I think he'll fr he'll thrive in that system under uh, Ryan Day and Ohio State. And that leaves Tate Martell, of course, and it, I do think he's going to have to go ahead and sit out the year, which is not the end of the world. He's still young. He, like I said, he redshirted his freshman year at Ohio State, and then was the backup this year. So technically, he would be a sophomore, a redshirt sophomore this year. Next year, when he's eligible to play, he'll be a redshirt junior with two years of eligibility left. So he, he's, it's not like he's in a bad situation if he has to sit out a year. Miami's got an entirely new coaching staff anyway. Uh, you don't really know what they're going to look like next year. They're they're not really in a position quarterback wise where they're as desperate as Ohio State. Ohio State desperately needs Justin Fields to play this year. Their quarterback situation is just that bad. Uh, they're probably going to try to get another guy on National Signing Day here coming up in a couple of weeks in February, or maybe bring in another graduate transfer. But let's just be real; they won't be able to get one that's at 
a level of someone who could potentially play as a freshman. Uh, whoever they get uh, is going to be a, a backup or a depth type quarterback. So really all of Ohio State's eggs are in the Justin Fields basket, whereas a team like Miami, not, not so much. I, they can afford to uh, to take the one-year wait on a kid like Tate Martell. And I think Tate Martell's got a lot of talent too. And and and, and it's, it's harder to know for sure, right, or to sort of project what type of success he might have at Miami because they have an entirely new coaching staff. And we don't really know, with Manny Diaz being a first-year head coach, we don't really know what sort of, of style or scheme or philosophy he's going to end up going with, right? I mean, we can look at who he's hired uh, offensive coordinator wise and offensive coaching wise and stuff like that. But we just don't know what his overall philosophy is going to be there. So it would be hard to project uh, Tate Martell and what he may or may not do at Miami anyway. So uh, again, interesting here with, with these new uh, red shirt rules where the players can play four games, they're, they're able to show off their talent, right? Uh, in theory anyway. So you're, I think you're going to see a lot more of this, not a lot less and you know some people think this is really really bad for college football some people think these rules were arcane to start with and, and you should have been letting players transfer wherever they wanted all along anyway but you're going to have a lot of this I think you're going to have a lot of highly recruited players quarterbacks tend to get the most attention in these situations but I think you're going to have a lot of highly recruited players at a lot of different positions who show up as a true freshman at a school find out they're not starting or may not start for a year or two and they're going to look to get out. Uh, they're going to use that those four games if 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 it if they're able to if the coaching staff plays it that way. They're going to use those four games as basically an audition for another team, and they're going to look to get out. I think you're going to see a lot more of this, not a lot less. I don't think this is going away. I don't think the transfer rules uh, are going to get stricter in the years to come. If anything, they're going to get looser and looser and less restrictive. Nobody, I don't think, wants to see college turn into NFL junior, but unfortunately, it seems like every year that goes by, we're getting closer and closer to that. You now have a playoff system. We've only had it for four years. People are already talking about doubling it to eight teams. You got people out there that want 12 or 16. Um, so unfortunately, it looks like that's the way it's headed. But with these transfer rules, you can expect to see a lot more of this going forward. And, and the red shirt, the, 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 it's the combination of the new red shirt rule, right, where you can play four games without blowing your red shirt, and the loosening of these transfer rules due to pressure from outside uh, sources. It's just going to lead to a lot more of this transferring. But uh, these are three of the bigger names here. Hurt's definitely going to be the guy in Maryland. Justin Fields, 95% chance in my mind he's the starting quarterback for Ohio State this year. And Tate Martell, probably going to have to sit out a year. Uh, that'll give him a year. You still practice and all that when you're sitting out. That'll give him a year in a system, and then we'll see if he's able to take the starting job next year, which will be uh, year two for Manny Diaz down at the U. Anyway, tell me what you guys think below in the comments section. Out of those three quarterbacks, who do you think will be the most successful year one, and who do you think will be the most successful over the long run? I'm going to go with Justin Fields over the long run. I, you know, Tate Martell has to sit out this year, so I think Jalen Hurts will. Ha I think Jalen Hurts will have the best year of the three in 2019. I think over the next three years, I think Justin Fields has the the potential to be the best of the two that are remaining. Hertz only has one year of eligibility, so he'll be gone after this year. So you have Tate Martell and Justin Fields will be at their respective schools for two or three years down the road, depending on if they leave early for the NFL or not. I, my money's on Justin Fields. I think he's going to really explode at Ohio State. Like I said, they've proven that they know how to use that type of quarterback and that type of talent at that position. So that's sort of how I feel about it. Let me know how you feel in the comments down below. I appreciate you guys watching. Uh, today's Wednesday. Remember, no live show today. Next live show will be Thursday night at 10 p.m. Eastern. Make sure you check that out if you haven't. We have a good time on those live shows. So Thursday night at 10 and then Friday afternoon at 3. I have another video up for you guys tomorrow around lunchtime too. I appreciate you watching. And have a great morning.